Uh, it's time for another math easy solution. To discuss further into trigonometric substitution for integrals, and now basically look at example two, the example series. And in this example, we're going to cover basically solving for the area of an ellipse, and also it you, know, you could use the same proof for the proof of a circle, which I'll get to at the end, because basically a circle is a type of an ellipse. Basically, this example we're going to solve, find the area enclosed by the ellipse x squared uh, divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1. And this is how the equation of ellipse looks like. You can see more, more info on ellipse in my video links uh, below. And basically, if you have an ellipse like this, at this point, this is basically at a and 0. So at that, that's when x is equal to a. And at this point, this is at negative a and 0. That's a. And the top one right here, this is at, um, yeah, this is at 0 and b. And this point is at uh, 0 and negative b. And we basically have to solve for the area enclosed by it. So first thing we'll do is uh, let's write this in terms of y. So just y squared over b squared equals 2, so just move this to the right side. So move it to the right side, so 1 minus x squared over a squared. So now that we have this, we could t multiply uh, both sides by b squared, so we get y squared is equal to b squared times the by 1 minus x squared over a squared. Now I want to get rid of this a squared, I don't want this uh, divided by just to simplify it further. So what we'll do is multiply this right here by a squared over a squared. So this just equals to 1. But I, uh, but it's the same thing. You're just dividing it. So what we could do is now take out the bottom a squared. So this would equal to b squared over, uh, this is going to be a squared. Let's write this bit better. And now this top is going to be a squared minus x squared. So this just looks a bit simpler. And this is also setting up for trigonometric substitution, which we'll get to in a bit. So now what we could do is square root both sides. So this is what y squared is. If we square root it, we get y is equal to. This is there's a square, so those just cancel. So what, this will be just b over a. And there's a plus minus square root a squared minus uh, x squared. And now we do the plus or minus, uh, yeah, because when we square root, you know, because there's a, a y squared, if, if y is negative or positive, this will be positive. So we have to include this scenario here where this is, yeah, where y is either negative or positive. So now we have this, but we also know that the ellipse is symmetrical with respect to both axes. Basically, if we look at over here, it's symmetrical on both sides. So this looks exactly the same same way if you were to look at the right side or the top and bottom. It's just it's just very symmetrical. Thus, the area could be just considered as four times the area of the first quadrant, which is if we just consider this area alone and times it by four because it's all symmetrical. So yeah, if we were to consider this quadrant right here only, then this equation, this is on the positive side, or versus the negative. So we're only considering the positive. So this will only be looking at the plus side of this equation. So y equals to plus b over a square root a minus a squared minus x squared. So the area of the ellipse would be basically, I'll write that over here. So area of the ellipse is going to be equal to four times now the integral of this function. So 4 times uh, this is going to be b over a times by square root a squared minus x squared. So that's area of the ellipse. So we're just multiplying this first quadrant by 4. Now b and a are constants. So we take that out. So this equals to 4 times b over a integral. And again, this integral, we're doing it from, from this point right here, which is 0 up to here which is equal to a. So that's where x equals a or or a equals x or x equals a. So we go from 0 up to a. So from 0 to a, take this constant out of this a squared minus x squared dx. Put the dx there. 
And now this uh, integral right here, we could apply trigonometric substitution like I showed in my earlier uh, video. So trig substitution. Yeah. And from my earlier video, I showed that if we have a function like this where it's a squared minus x squared, we should let x equals to, well, a, which is this, this one here, times by sine theta. So we're going to be changing the variable because right now it's not straightforward to solve this integral. And in this case, we have d of x, which is equal to a cosine theta uh, d theta. Let's take a derivative of that. And now what we also have is uh, we can change these uh, points here. So at x equals 2, uh, at x equals 0, we get basically 0 is equal to a sine theta. a is constant, so sine theta is 0. And in this case, this would just be, well, uh, theta is equal to 0, because sine of 0 is, is 0. So now at x equals to a, we get a equals to a sine theta. So the a's would just cancel, and we're left with sine theta equals to 1. And this is true, well, when we look at the graph of sine, looks something like, um, let's make this a theta y, it looks something like this, where this point right here is pi over 2, and this is at 1. So in this case right here, we have theta is equal to pi over 2. Yeah, pi over 2 right there. So what this means is, in our case, we have theta is going to be, well, less than or equal to pi over 2, and greater than or equal to 0, because uh, our points 0 to a, and the first time that happens, it comes to here. So basically, yeah, when we change the variable from, from x to theta, so we go basically from 0 to pi over 2. So this is the new change of variable we're doing. And now what we'll do here is when we have this, uh, uh, this square root, what happens when we apply the trick substitution? So a squared minus x squared. So now we have x equals to a sine theta. So this equals to a squared minus a squared sine squared theta. Let me put in that inside there. Now we factor out the a, so we get a squared 1 minus sine squared theta. And now also there's the number of the trig identity. This just equals to cosine theta. So we know that equals to that. And now this right here, because this a squared, we just will be square root of it. So we just take the square out. So we have a, and now we have this uh, square root cosine squared theta, which equals to, well, this, this squares go out, a cos theta is absolute value. And in this case, our a from our drawing of an ellipse is greater than zero. And also this cosine theta, we know that, uh, so at this point, we know the range or, or, or the domain from zero is less than pi over two and greater than or equal to zero. So when we look at the equation or a graph of cosine theta, it's something like this. And at this point right here is pi over two, and this is at zero. So as you can see, if this is cosine theta, inside this region right here, yeah, inside this region right here, this is basically uh, greater than uh, greater than or equal to zero. So if it's greater than or equal to zero, we can just remove this absolute value. And remember, this is an absolute value because of this square root. So be it basically, we have this because the square root inside of it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Otherwise, you won't have a real number. So because it's greater than zero, we get basically equals to a cosine theta. So that's just what this equals to. So now what we could do is apply everything inside our integral. So now we have areas equal to uh, 4, or let's scroll back to what it was. So 4b over a times by, no, times by integral from 0 to a of square root a squared minus x squared. So times it by b over a, square root 0a square root right here, a squared minus x squared. 
uh, dx. So now this equals 2, 4 times b over a. Integral now is changed from 0 to pi over 2. And now this right here is equal to right here. So a cosine theta. And now our d of x, that's equal to a cosine theta d theta. So this equals 2 a cosine theta d theta. So now what we could do is, well, we can cancel one of these a's. We could take these out. So we can cancel this and this. So that's canceled. And now this cos squared is multiplied together. So we get 4 b. And now to take this a to the left side. So a, b, a, integral from 0, pi over 2 cosine squared theta d theta. And now we have this, and again, the uh, integral of this is not straightforward, but like I went over in my earlier videos, and trig identities uh, of, uh, basically, this is a half angle trig identity. So we go half angle, or let's write it down. Basically, recall half uh, the half angle trig identity, which I covered in my earlier video. So basically, cosine squared theta, this is equal to one half of one plus cosine two theta. And this is half angle because this angle two theta is double this, or this half, or this theta is half of two theta. So, and because we know the integral of uh, cosine by itself, not squared. So, if we take this back here and include it, we get four b a integral from zero to pi over two of one half. 1 plus cosine 2 theta d theta. And now take this 2 out. This is equals 2. Divide this. Divide the 4 by 2. And then this is b a. So 2 times b a 0 pi over 2. 1 plus cosine 2 theta d theta. And now we could, well, solve this integral. So 2 b a. Now the integral of 1, that's just going to be theta, plus, in this case, integral of cosine theta, that's, well, sine 2 theta, and now we have, well, a 1 divided by 2, so divide this up. So if we take the, the derivative of this, this would just be cosine 2 theta times by 2, they cancel, and we get back to here. So this is from 0 to pi over 2. So we, if we evaluate it, we get 2 b a... And now we get put the pi over 2 inside. Pi over 2 plus, well, there's the 1 half sine. Pi over 2 inside, there's a 2 theta. So the 2 is cancelled, so sine pi. And now this is going to be all subtracted by putting a 0. So 0 plus, well, 1 half sine of 0. Put the 0 in there. It's 0. So we have this. And recall, well, this is just going to be 0. If you just look at the sine uh, function right here, it's something like this, where it goes up and down. And as you can see, at this is at pi, and it's at 0. So at these two points, they both go to 0. So there's 0 everywhere, so we're just left with equals 2ba times pi over 2. The 2's cancel, we're just left with pi times it by b a and that is the equation the equation of an ellipse or the area of an ellipse so this is equals to area of an ellipse right here and this works for any ellipse and also notice that well although this is an equation of ellipse if we set a equals to b equals to r so the axes these all equal each other then this is just a circle, this, then this means we've proven the famous equation of a circle. So basically, basically if we had a circle instead of a, a, an ellipse, or basically where this is right here, A, if we set it equal to B, which is B, and then this just set it so they're both equal to R. So what this means is these equal each other, so the area of a circle, because once again a circle is a type of an ellipse, this just equals to pi, well that's going to be r squared, so r times r. And so we've just proven the area of a circle right here. And as you can see, this is basically an ellipse that's, uh, but, but that has equal 
axis is A and B, and again, this is the radius R. So that is our circle right there. Yeah, so anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you followed along. It's a pretty extensive example, but it's pretty cool. It's uh, basically solving the area of an ellipse. Also solves the area of a circle. It's the famous one to the pi r squared. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you'll learn from this uh, video. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.